Hello friends, welcome back to another video and welcome to my first ever collab. This is my first time ever making a video that somebody else is involved with that I don't know in real life, obviously. This is my first time where somebody online decided that they wanted to make a video that involved me and I want to involve them. So huge shout out to Laurel, the person that reached out. I'll obviously have her channel linked everywhere. <laughs> but she reached out and said, hey, would you like to do a collab? Maybe a 24 hour reading video of sorts. And it's been a while since I've done one of these. So I thought that would be very fun because also I've been very unmotivated I've been kind of disconnected from everything. I've been floating through life. So I think this video will be really good to kind of get me focused back in on something that I enjoy so much. I just haven't given myself the time to read. So why not just dedicate way too much time to it? So this is going to be your typical 24 hour reading vlog. It's not going to be over one 24 hour period. It's going to be 24 hours total over however long it takes because I am in school. I do work and I would probably have a breakdown if I tried to do it all at once. And the reason it's a collab is because we picked each other's TBRs. So I sent over a video of my physical TBR and she sent me one of hers and then from those we picked what the other person should read. So really quickly here is Laurel's TBR. Hello to Casey and the viewers. Um, these are my books. And if you would like to see what books I picked for her to read, then go over there, watch that video. But if you're here, then you get to see what she picked for me to read. Out of my physical TBR, she picked six books for me to read, which isn't terribly unrealistic. I definitely don't think I'll get to all of them, but we wanted to have a little bit of variety. We wanted to have options. I'm just going to go in the order that she said them. The first one we have is Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. I started reading this, I want to say in March or April, and then I just never got back into it because I was in the middle of like six books at once. It was just too much to get through, so I decided to put it down, but I have not stopped thinking about it. I frequently reference it, even though I only got a couple pages in. I already know the author's voice is really strong in this. I really have been wanting to pick it up. This is a nonfiction book that focuses on how feminism typically focuses on a very privileged type of woman. And yes, it is obviously important for that type of woman to be equal, but typically the feminism that we talk about doesn't consider people of color or just generally the layers of discrimination that certain people face. And this calls out the fact that people of color, specifically women, are typically pushed aside even in these movements that are supposed to be about equality. That's what I got from what I did read. The second book that she picked is one that I read, I don't even know how many years ago. I read it right when it came out. And it's the first book of Magnus Chase by Rick Riordan. I was a huge Percy Jackson kid in middle school. Percy Jackson, Kane Chronicles, all of that. So when this series came out, I bought the first three books. I don't remember if I read the other ones and I don't really remember anything about this book. So I think if I do get to it in this video, it'll be really nice to revisit this story and these characters and this author just as a whole. And it's also been a while since I've gone deep into a world like this where it's so other. Then A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. I think I'm the least excited to read this one. I don't know that I'm gonna get to it. She said that this is a really good book to annotate, but this is a used copy and it's already pretty annotated. Whoever had this before me had a time with it. I also don't know anything about it. All I know is that it's a classic. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna read this in this video, but it is an option. <laughs> then we have Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford. This is a memoir and it's also a signed edition, which I thought was pretty cool. It's a story about the author's childhood and her incarcerated father. As Ashley battles her body and her environment, she embarks on a powerful journey to find the threads between who she is and what she was born into and the complicated familial love that often binds them. I love a good parent-child dynamic. And it's also not super long, so it's not too intimidating. I don't think it would take that long to get through, but obviously it is kind of a darker story, so. And then the last two are kind of I don't know. I'm cheating a little bit with these because the first one is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. I did already read this back in February, but I bought a physical copy just because I wanted to go through and annotate it and just look back at it because I love these characters so much. I think their relationship is so good. The communication is written in a way that's really comforting to read. You're following these two characters. It's a second chance. There's like 10 years in between when they were together the first time and when they're meeting up now. And you're trying to figure out what it is that tore them apart that long ago and why it kept them apart for so long, what it was that could be so serious. Genuinely, I enjoyed this book so much and I would really like to go through it and annotate it and just relive the story. And then the last book is one that I've been trying to get through recently. It's Detransition Baby. I started to read this for my queer month of videos and I'm currently on page 194. Honestly, while I was recording that, I forgot that this was one of the books that Laurel had picked. But we're here now and that just means we've got a head start. In this book, you're following three people. One of them is a trans woman who would like to become a mother, but because she's trans, she can't have a kid of her own. The other is her ex who at one point 
was a trans woman, but detransitioned. And he is dating somebody that he works with who he got pregnant. She has been divorced in the past. And between these three very complicated lives, they're trying to potentially share this child because they all want something out of this relationship or they all want something that comes with having a child. And it's very messy because you're trying to balance all these different parts of their lives where obviously you have this trans discussion, but you also have one of the characters is Asian American, but passes as white. So you get the complications of dealing with that identity and also the complication of being divorced. And a big theme of this book is how divorced cis women tie in with trans women, how they have very similar experiences. And that's such a wild concept, that's such a thing I've never heard before, but I really love the way that this author talks, not just in the book, but just as a person when she's talking in interviews, because she explains this book as being something that's written for trans people. It's not there to explain the experience, because it's assuming that you already know the experience. So it's trying to push that whole idea and say, okay, now that we know the trans experience, how does that reflect into the world with these very specific examples? How can these different experiences all tie in with each other? And I think it is so interesting. It is so beautifully written and it genuinely is something where if you don't understand this community, if you don't understand this identity or you don't relate to the characters, then you might have a hard time reading it because it doesn't shy away from conversations that you really wouldn't see anywhere else. So these are the six books that I'm going to be choosing from to read for the next 24 hours. I am going to start with The Transition Baby just because it's the one that I'm in the middle of. I have a little bit over 100 pages left in this. We're just going to start our 24 hour timer and we're going to get right into it. I'm very excited. It's 1042 the next day, July 27th. I read for two hours and nine minutes last night. And in that time, I read from page 195 to 335, which is 140 pages. And it also means I finished Detransition Baby. And the one thing I will say about it is first, check the content warnings because it doesn't shy away from content like, I don't know, talk about abortion or suicide, stuff like that. It's not afraid to get into that. So be careful going into it if you're sensitive to that type of thing. But also just know going into it that this book takes a little bit of work, especially if you can't relate to the characters, if you don't understand the feelings that they have. There are a lot of concepts that are thrown out there that might not seem like they make a lot of sense or might not seem like they connect, and it's also not a linear timeline. You're jumping back and forth in this relationship, but even in the present timeline, when you're in the present or you're in the past, even in those sections, you're jumping around where the character will have an idea and then without saying anything, it'll jump into that memory and then come back to present day and explain what's actually happening. And also the word choice, I think... It's very sophisticated, I think is the word I want to use. And that's not at all a bad thing. It feels very informed. It feels very educated without feeling like it's super forced. But it does mean that you have to pay attention to the book while you're reading it. I really enjoyed it. I think it's a really unique experience. I appreciate the author for being able to write it out and share it. The characters are not all good people. You don't necessarily root for any of them. You're just watching this story play out. I think it was what I wanted from Manhunt. If you saw me reading that book, it just wasn't for me. And some people said that it represented the trans experience really well. I feel like this book captured the feelings that that book wanted to, but obviously in a much more real life present day setting. And then before I went to bed, I very quickly picked up Magnus Chase because I am so excited to get back into this world. Like I said before, I was big into Percy Jackson. I read all 10 of the base books. My first ever social media was a Percy Jackson cosplay account, so we've come a long way, but... <laughs> This series came out around the same time as The Trials of Apollo, and I think because they were coming out as we were reading them, the fact that they were also being released kind of at the same time, I believe this one was 2015 and Trials of Apollo started 2016, so he was very much jumping between the two as they were coming out, and it was hard to follow the two. I felt like the main characters were very, very similar, so I just lost interest in both series. And they also were coming out right as I was leaving that phase. I was moving from middle to high school, so I just stopped reading this type of book in general. But it's been so long since I've read a book about mythology, 
biology, when I was like 10 years old, I would put myself to sleep by reading Greek myths to go to bed. So obviously when Percy Jackson came around, I was super interested in all of that. And then this, you're not following Greek gods, you're following Norse gods. And the thing is, I typically would never pick this up on my own just because I have a really hard time revisiting childhood things because I don't want to rewrite the memories that I have of them. So I don't want to read this now and then forget how I experienced it the first time, but also it's just a new experience. It's not rewriting, it's just adding another layer and there's nothing wrong with that. If anything, this will bring out the old memories because I'll be reliving it. And from what I've read so far, I can say I am so excited. I'm so happy that I'm picking this up. He just recently released a book about Nico and Will. I have to get it. I've been debating. I have to do it. <laughs> I love how silly the chapter titles are, I love how silly the characters are, and how self-aware they are at how strange their situations are. Every page of this is making my heart feel so warm because it's just bringing me back to a very different time. You can say hi. <sighs> Juice. But I'm on page 19, there's still so much of this book to get through. Like I was saying, it's so easy to read, it's so easy to get into, which is also because it's for a younger audience. But in times like this, where there is a lot of stress, there are a lot of things going on. It's nice to have a story that you don't have to take so seriously. I need to allow myself to read more books like this. Not everything has to be a challenge. Not everything has to be forcing myself to do these great things. Media is also there just to enjoy. So I'm very excited. I'm going to keep reading this. It's a little bit later, it's actually 8.53 p.m. the next night. And if you saw my timer on the computer reset, which is very unfortunate because it means we don't get the satisfying 24 hour, but we're just gonna keep going. Before it reset, I did get to page 125, which got me to three and a half hours. So we're making some steady progress. I don't have anything new to say about this book. It's just a fun time, but I don't have any reading updates for today because I've just been doing school. And that's gonna be a common trend of this video. Reading has become very low priority because school is the big thing now, so. I'm getting to it when I can. It's 1.30 p.m. on July 30th. We're just not gonna count yesterday because I worked for 11 hours and I don't think I could have processed any words in that time. But here's my little check-in because we're currently five and a half hours through this. Recap, we read 140 pages of Detransition Baby, finished that off, and now I'm reading Magnus Chase. So I've been reading this for close to three and a half hours and I'm on page 333. It feels like this book is taking a really long time, but it's just because it's a longer book. It's not like the story is dragging. The story's really fun to get through. There are a lot of little details because you're following a quest. They're trying to stop the end of the world as you do in this type of book. And along the way, they keep getting stopped by different things that come up. So it's slow with that because you want it to get to the final battle, but also you have to have all this build up and all this character development. I'm just scared of what to read after this. Out of the books that Laurel chose for me, one of them is a memoir. One of them is strictly nonfiction, just a more informative book. One of them is a reread of a romance. And one of them is a classic and I don't know which one I'm in the mood for. I do think the two nonfictions could be easier to get through just because they're a little bit shorter, but at the same time, I want to make sure I give them the time that they deserve. I don't want to just speed through them for this. Worst case, if we can't think of anything, I'll just pick up the second Magnus Chase. It's 
it's 4 p.m. and I just hit 3 hours 27 minutes, but that's on this timer because the other one reset. So if I do the math right, which we're asking for a lot with that, but if I'm doing the math right, we just hit seven hours. And I just finished the first Magnus Chase book. And it's so frustrating because as much as I wanna be doing the books for this video, it leaves you on such a cliffhanger. Is it a little bit repetitive? Sure. Is it a little bit predictable? Sometimes, but that doesn't stop it from being a good time. I think I'm gonna start Hood Feminism just because I got like 30 pages through it the other day. And by the other day, I mean a couple months ago. It's about a serious topic, but the writing style is pretty easy to take in. It's very conversational in the way that it's calling out these issues. So I think maybe I'll start this tonight. I think just to make it easier for myself. Eliminate as much math as possible. We're gonna do this book by book. confession. I have no clue the last time I recorded was. I've been sitting at 16 hours left, which means I've only read for eight hours. I made it to page 60 of Hood Feminism, and I can say that it's kind of essential reading. I think everybody needs to read a perspective like this, because it's something that a lot of people don't consider, because you want to assume that if you are part of this whole feminist movement, then you're doing a good thing. And sometimes that can blind you to the depth of it, and how many things aren't being addressed, because you think that you are progressing. But I got 60 pages into this, and then I got caught up in school work. It's currently 6 p.m. on August 9th. So it's been a little bit. I did finish classes. I have a week until I start my next semester, so we're gonna get through this challenge. I don't really have much else to say about this book just because it is non-fiction. It's very much something that you have to read and understand at your own time. I definitely can't explain it in the same way that this author is doing it because I think she's doing a brilliant job. So I'm just gonna keep reading this and then I'll probably catch up with you guys maybe when I finish it. I'm so sorry. We're gonna keep moving. We're gonna get through this, I promise. <laughs> Tribute to Charlie Puth. He died. What? It's a glorious day and the end is in sight. We have crossed the 12 hour mark. The reason it was so hard was because I was trying to do schoolwork on top of reading for this, but all of my books were nonfiction. And I also wasn't counting school reading as part of this timed reading, which means I was still reading lots and lots of hours, but I just wasn't counting it for this. And then on top of that, I was trying to read another nonfiction book. So it's just a lot, but today I sat I drank my matcha and I did finish this. It's 258 pages and it took me roughly four hours and 40 minutes to get through. And genuinely, I think this is such an important book for people to read because the whole idea of it is just that everything that affects women is a feminist issue. So typically when you think of feminism, you might think about how women get paid less or that there's not as many women in power or whatever it is. But this book talks about how every aspect of life needs to be focused on in the feminist movement. So stuff like education, healthcare, not just reproductive rights, but healthcare as a whole, housing, parenting, crime. It talks about how every issue is 
is a feminist issue because women are affected. And I think at some points it was fairly repetitive, but that makes sense for what the topic is because it's all focused on the same idea. The other thing I will admit is this book is written by a Black woman, which I am not. So there are some experiences in here, and for most readers there are going to be experiences in here that you can't personally relate to, but that's part of the benefit of reading it, is that you don't know these exact experiences. And especially if you are like a white woman or somebody else who has more privilege, you're not even gonna think about these issues because it's not something that affects you. So there are things that I can't relate to, but there are also a lot of things that I can relate to or that I didn't even realize affect people so seriously. At times reading this book can feel really overwhelming because it points out just how many things need to change and need to be worked on. It feels impossible, it feels like we're never gonna reach the end, but it kind of ends off by saying that things change when people get angry and by presenting all of these things in one book, by saying that there's all of these problems that we need to work on, people should get angry. And also I've been reading this since Women's History Month, so it was very satisfying to finally get through it. And then I was very excited to move out of nonfiction for a little bit to jump into a story that I could just enjoy and fall away into, and I decided to pick up a reread. Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren I read in February, but Laurel picked that I read this book. I had it on my physical TBR because I wanted to go back through and annotate the whole thing because I thought it was just such a cute story. I think it's such a great representation of not just relationship love, but also family love. I think that's so important in this. It is a reread, I'm not going to spoil anything here, but I will say that makes it a much deeper experience, knowing how it all ties in and then being able to reflect on the ways that they're interacting, because this is a second chance romance, so by the end you find out what it was that took them apart the first time. I'm just having a really good time. I'm already up to page 141. Genuinely, I could stay up all night reading this. We're making very good progress. I've officially hit the 16 hour mark. We have eight hours left. I will say just for time reference, it's currently 5 p.m. August 16th. I'm pretty sure I already said it, but this video was supposed to take place over one week, but being students and having jobs and whatever else, it's okay. The 24 hours are still happening at some point. So first of all, over the course of two days while I was sitting in cafe, I was just hanging out. I had my little coffee. I read all of Love and Other Words. This was a reread because I wanted to go through and annotate and I still need to add the tabs. I still need to figure out what I want to do with all of that. But I did read through the whole thing. I added my little markings. I kept track of the pages that I might want to mark later. And I think this reread solidified this book as a five star for me. The whole point of a second chance romance, the whole thing that it's leading up to is what got them to break apart the first time. Whatever the conflict is has to be serious enough that they would break off the first time, but also not so serious that they can't get back together. I've heard of a lot of books that do it poorly, but personally, I think this one is done so well and it is so devastating to reread a story like this where now you know why the breakup happened in the first place. You know what you're leading up to. You see them as kids, you see them reconnecting as adults and either way, I wish it could stay in these happy moments, but at some point they have to face this big thing that happened. My only complaint is that I read it so fast over the course of those two days that now it's over again. Now I have to think about the next time I'm gonna reread it in order to visit these characters again because I just love it all so much. And that was 403 pages that I read over four hours and six minutes. And then we are very steadily moving through this TBR that Laurel picked for me because I only have two books left. I have Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford and then I have A Tale of Two Cities, which I already kind of said that I don't feel like I'm gonna read this book for this video just because I started it when I was in classes, I finished up those, and now my fall classes start tomorrow, and the last thing I want to do is try to use the brain power to get through a classic when I have assignments to get to. But I do think I can read this. It's a memoir about the author's experience having a father who was incarcerated. It talks about how hard it is to just grow up, and I will admit I'm not the greatest at summarizing this book because I will never understand the experiences that this person went through. There are a lot of really serious conversations of things that happened that most people would never even think of. And even what the whole book is based off of, of her dad going to prison and then potentially getting out, that's something that obviously very many people are affected by it, but there are so many people who will never know what that's like. So I think it's a really interesting perspective, but I'm not going to sit here and try to make it seem like I can understand or that I can relate to it in any way. And I think that makes it a very interesting reading experience because you're just taking in the story. I'm only 30 
three pages in so far, but from what I can see, it's very much family focused. So it's talking about the trauma that she has from her family, but also how she needed her family because she needs their love and their support and they all stuck together. Family relationships are hard, is kind of the big theme. I really don't want to disrespect the story, so I don't know how much of it I can explain. I do recommend that people read it for themselves, if that's something that you're interested in, because my phone storage ran out. I'll see you later. It's 7.22 on August 17th and I finished Somebody's Daughter. This book was 210 pages and it took me 2 hours and 49 minutes to get through. And I will say, if you're gonna read this book, definitely check the content warnings first because it is heavier. The story is presented as being a story about this daughter whose father was incarcerated, but it's very much focused on her relationship with her mother and with the other people in her family. So there's a lot of conversations surrounding physical or emotional abuse, which I said earlier that I couldn't relate to the things that this person experienced and because of that I'm just sort of reading the story and hearing what they went through, but on a smaller level I can still relate to a lot of it. I really love reading about parent-child relationships, but it's also one of the hardest things to read about. Just generally, the desire to love and to be loved is really hard to deal with, it's really hard to navigate. And the same thing that I say about every memoir, autobiography, whatever else, every non-fiction book that I read about a person's life, I infinitely appreciate their ability to put that story out into the world and to be so vulnerable because by sharing their experiences they're either educating other people on what it's like to live with these circumstances or they're allowing other people to realize that they're not alone with their experiences. And the thing is, I finished this book, we still have five and a half hours left in this challenge, which is a little bit of an issue because I've gone through the TBR. The last book that was selected for the official TBR for this video was A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, but I just have no desire to read that at all right now. I feel like the past couple of books have been a nice blend of nonfiction and learning about super serious topics, and then really light, fun fiction books that you can just fall away into, and I've been really enjoying that combination. But I don't even know what this book is about. <laughs> but I know that I don't have the brain power to get through all of this right now. I will at some point, but this is not gonna be that. So that means we have freedom of choice now. We've gone through as much of the TBR as we're gonna get through. I have options for what I might pick up for the last little bit of this. This is all my physical TBR in here. I haven't really talked about it that much. I might do an updated physical TBR video just to try and get through it before the end of the year. I definitely don't think I can get through all of these by the end of the year, but it would be nice to sort of recap and see how much I still have. It's gotten to the point where they can't fit in here anymore, so they're just stacking up here, so we need to do something about it. But there are three books that I'm feeling really drawn to right now. The first one in there is is the second Magnus Chase book because for this video we read the first one so it would be kind of on theme to continue it but if I read the second one I will want to read the third one and I don't know if I want to commit to that much of the series. Then I have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue which I'm currently on page 191. I started reading this at the end of June and then I put it on hold because school and videos came up and I just never got around to it and that was really frustrating because I was enjoying this so much. I had been in a reading slump for so long and this book became the only thing that I wanted to read and then I didn't allow myself to read it. And then the third book that I might read is The Sun and the Star, which is the Nico and Will book that I bought earlier in this video. Honestly, just based on those descriptions, I think it's pretty obvious which one I'm gonna pick, and it's gonna be Addie LaRue, because I didn't allow myself to read it even though I was enjoying it and even though I wanted to continue, so now that we have the opportunity, I'm gonna go all in. I don't know how much I'll be able to update about the actual reading experience just because I'm already past the beginning parts, and I don't want to spoil anything for the rest of it, so I won't be able to talk too much about what goes on. I think I'm really gonna enjoy this one the whole way through.
Good morning guys, it is 12 p.m. on August 19th and I am determined to finish this video today. Currently I have a little bit over four hours left, I think I'm at 420 right now. I made it up to page 268 of this book but it feels like it's taking forever just because these pages are really big. And I would like to continue because I like the story and I like the characters, I like the setup, I like how everything is going but I also don't want to feel like I'm forcing myself to get through this just for the sake of the video. If it feels like it's dragging or if it feels like I'm forcing it then I might put it down and switch to the second Magnus Chase. It seems doable. I think we're gonna get out of this. I think it's gonna be okay. It did take me an entire month, but I finished my 24 hours of reading. So let's jump in here. Let's do a final little wrap up of everything that we got through, which I will say it was incredibly successful. This is so many books. I've done a couple 24 hour reading challenges before, but they've both been the type where you stay up all night and try to get it done all at once. So it was really nice to do it timed over however long it took. It was a big point of stress for me for a long time because I just wanted to get through it and it felt like it was taking forever. But it's also really interesting to see just how many books I can get through within a 24 hour period. So throughout this challenge I read a total of seven books. I will say two of them I had already started and one of them I didn't finish. I read exactly 2,000 pages. It is so satisfying to see. It means I read roughly 83 pages per hour. I'm not gonna say my star ratings in this. If you are curious about that, I always link my story graph and my Goodreads. I just don't like to say it in here because it's constantly changing. I'm constantly rethinking what I thought about books and how they compared to other ones. And also a star rating doesn't really mean anything because it's a lot more about personal enjoyment than the actual quality of a book. First book that I finished reading was Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. This is something that I was reading for June. I stopped and then I picked it up this month to finish it, which I will say is the most satisfying thing because for the past couple of months I've been in the middle of maybe five books at once and I finally brought that stack down to now only being in the middle of three books which is still not ideal but it's manageable. So I finished Detransition Baby. This is by a trans woman. This book was written for a trans audience. It's not written as if you need to learn about it. It's written as if you've already lived through it. It doesn't need to explain all of these big deep gender feelings because it's assuming you as the reader already understand or already experience these things so it instead focuses on how those feelings affect other parts of life. And a really big part of this book is comparing the trans woman experience to the experience of cis but divorced women. What could the similarities possibly be? These are very very different experiences but you look closer and it's a lot about the disappointment that comes with it. Feeling like you didn't do good enough or that you didn't live up to something and then trying to build a new identity after such a big part of what you were was taken away. Definitely not for everybody. It's definitely not the most satisfying ending. You don't get this big happy ending where they all figure it out. It's just a story about an experience. I really enjoyed it and as with all of these books I really appreciate the authors for putting these things out there. And I read 140 pages of that book over the course of two hours and nine minutes. Then I wanted something a little bit more light because I was balancing this reading with my schoolwork and it was just a lot in the brain so I picked up Magnus Chase which was a very nice visit to my past because Magnus Chase, Percy Jackson, all of that was my middle school experience. 
It's 491 pages and I read it over four hours and 46 minutes. And it just reminded me what it's like to read a book for the sake of enjoying it. There's no other reason. There's no bigger picture that you have to take away. It's just a good time. I noticed a pattern for this video where I was very much jumping between fiction and nonfiction. I was trying to balance everything out because the next book is Hood Feminism, which is something that I have been putting off since Women's History Month where I started it, but then it was just all too many books. Finally got around to finishing it. It's 258 pages, which I read over four hours and 40 minutes. There's a lot of information in here. I think this is a really beneficial book, especially for people who aren't minorities, because this book tries to convince you why you should care about these issues. It's saying, hey, there are a lot of things that are affecting women, even if on the surface it might not look like that, or you might not want to think about it like that. The whole book is just meant to call out issues in society and to hopefully get people to be mad about it and to try and fix it. I love the honesty of the author's voice. I think she's really aggressive about it, and I think that's exactly the type of energy that we need for topics like this. Then I jumped into an old favorite, Love in Other Words. I got a physical version because the first time I had read it on Kindle, but I loved it so much that I had to have it for myself so that I could go through and annotate. It's not the most practical because the tabs look very, very similar, but it just goes so well with the cover. I'll say the same things again and again about this book. I love the communication. I love the relationship. I love the parent, child, and everything about it. I love the way everything plays out and the way that every type of interaction is shown. It's a second chance romance. There's just so many good things about this book. It's 403 pages and I read it over the course of four hours and six minutes, but that doesn't count the time that I went back to put the tabs in because I was underlining while I was reading it, but I didn't have the tabs until after. Switch back to nonfiction. I read Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford. This is a memoir that is supposed to be focused on Ashley and her relationship with her incarcerated father, or at least that's what I thought when I was going into it but it's a lot more focused on her relationship with the other members in her family. Her father's really only mentioned at the beginning and the end of the book, but so much of this is focused on how what happened affected everybody else in her family. The ways that she was treated and the complicated relationship with her and her mother, her grandmother, whoever, how sometimes they could be really cruel to each other, but also they would cling to each other because that's all they had. It's 210 pages. I read it over the course of two hours and 49 minutes. And I think this pairs really well with the other books that I've been reading recently. I was reading a book for class about how religion is tied to whiteness and in this book she talks about how she's encouraged to go to church and she's encouraged to pray but she doesn't really see a point in it or she doesn't really feel that same connection. And then the same thing with right after reading Hood Feminism and then seeing a book like this where Ashley is clearly deeply affected by racism and by her father's incarceration and all of these things that would hold her back as a woman. It's all of these concepts that overlap. And I thought it was really interesting to read books that are mostly just straightforward facts and then to go to a memoir where you can see it playing out in real time. There are two books left. First is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, which I read 252 pages over three hours and 20 minutes. Again, I had already started this one back in June, so it took me nearly two months to finish, and I'm not even mad about that because I was enjoying it so much that I didn't want it to end. I feel like the setup and the development of the characters and the way that everything played out was just so perfect. It was so fun to see how it all came together, but it was also obviously really sad. If you don't know what this book is, it's about a girl who in the 1700s made a deal with the devil. And she traded her soul for the ability to live forever, but in doing that she also kind of lost the ability to exist. And you're following her through 300 years where she's dealing with this curse that she brought upon herself. I feel like I've been with these characters forever, I feel like I've lived a thousand lives with them, and at some points it was repetitive, but that's all kind of the whole point of this book. You're following her throughout time as she's going through all these repetitive things where people are saying, hey, who are you? Nice to know you. Next day, hey, who are you? Nice to know you. The same events playing out day after day because people don't remember who she is. It is repetitive, it's supposed to be, that's part of the whole trouble. But I feel like this book was really important for where I'm at right now in life because a big issue of the characters is just that they were worried that life is passing too fast, that they're being pushed into adulthood or they're being pushed into whatever decisions and they're not ready. They don't want to settle down, they don't want to have these super specific things that they follow for the rest of their lives, they want more choices, they want more time. And that's how I've been feeling recently, I feel like every day is just passing and there's never enough time to do everything that you want to do, so it was nice to see it play out with these characters, but the ending was absolutely devastating. And then the last book I read, I'm currently on page 246 which took up the last two hours and 10 minutes. It's the second Magnus Chase book. I think it's a really nice full circle way to end off this video, going back to something that we started the challenge with. And the one thing that I don't know how much I mentioned before, but I just love 
how Rick shows representation. I'm so grateful that I got to grow up on these books because the author tries so hard to show all different types of people and I think especially growing up when that was the book environment that I was introduced to, it just meant a lot for like everybody in the community. We all just grew up to accept these things because it's what was presented and it was presented in a way that was so natural. In the original Percy Jackson series, you have a gay character, you have people of color, you have different family experiences. Obviously the family experiences are very complicated in these books because their parents are gods. So there's a whole other layer there, but it's just the idea that they all live these different lives and people could see themselves in the characters. And then it just got better with this series because in the first book, you're introduced to a character who is deaf. He entirely relies on sign language to speak which is something that I was like 14 or 15 when these books were coming out and I was able to see that in such popular media and I just think the author is so good for trying to do that and for trying to do it accurately for describing the signs in a way that makes sense to how somebody would actually sign them and maybe it's not accurate all the time I don't know I can't judge that but I like that there is effort put in and then with this book you get introduced to a gender fluid character and I just love it so much everything about it is so casual the character just comes in and says hey Call me she unless I tell you otherwise because I'm gender fluid and that's that. And the characters just have to accept it and move on because they've got better things to worry about. It just doesn't matter, all these individual things. It's just so refreshing to see. And I love that a young adult author is able to put that so easily into their writing. And I really hope that more authors are doing that and that more kids are growing up with this type of media because it is so nice to see. But that brings us to the end of this video. Final thoughts. I had a lot of fun doing this challenge. Over the past couple of months, I want to say honestly since May, I've been pretty stressed about reading just because in June I self-assigned this big task of trying to read a book every day. Really not possible or realistic at all, but I thought it would be beneficial or I thought it would make me feel better, but I ended up just getting backed up and really stressed and then videos became a chore. That dragged into July where I just was not reading at all and along with that I started getting into school, so then school took priority over reading and I just wasn't enjoying any of it. So it was really nice to come into this video, which we've been planning for a couple months. And that was the other thing, was it was kind of eating away at my brain where I knew I had to get to it at some point, but I had all these other things going on. It was nice to finally get into it and to have a stack of books that was already picked for me. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to have any decisions. I just jump in, get it done. Again, huge thank you to Laurel for reaching out and for wanting to do this video with me. I've never worked with somebody before and it was really nice to have that accountability, to have somebody that I could reach out to and say, hey, Here's how I'm going with the video. How are you doing? Little progress check-ins and stuff like that. It was really nice. And if you do want to see what books I picked for Laurel to read, I'll of course link that video. You can go over there and say hey from me. I really miss posting. I miss editing. I miss doing all of this. I really... I forgot how much I love it because I've been prioritizing other things, but this was a huge focus for a reason, you know? Like I did it all because I loved it. So I'm trying to shift my content to do things that I actually enjoy instead of feeling forced to do it. We are entering fall time, so I would like to do book related content that is autumn themed. I know this time of year is really big for fantasy. I don't know. I'm trying to reassess my videos, but I just want to enjoy this season. I want to enjoy life as much as I can because the days have just been going by and I really need a way to just capture individual moments and to just live in them. And I don't know if that's going to find its way onto my channel or if that's just a personal thing that I need to do. So I make no promises, but we'll just, we'll see what happens. We'll see how it all plays out. There are some videos that I would like to make, but no pressure. And that's it for this video. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you like my face and you want to see more of it, you can subscribe to this channel or my main channel, Riverbend, where I post music content, or my Instagram, Spotify, Goodreads, and Storygraph, which I always have linked in the description. With all that being said, I'll see you guys around. Bye!